Yeah, first of all, I should tell to thank you to organization committee for having me uh, in a great organization. So I'm very happy to be here. Today I'm going to talk about uh, actually the technology of this materials you're here, you see. This is the, that's called a thermoelectric module, which is actually can be used as a power generator and also cooler. So before starting my talking, I would like to give a brief uh, information about the content of my presentation. First of all, we are going to talk about, I'm going to talk about what's a thermoelectric field and is it a promising technology? What's going to be in the future? And then application of this technology currently. And then basically what's the thermoelectric theory I will give and then the thermoelectric figure of merit, which is a uh, most important parameters for efficiency of this kind of materials. And then some novel approaches for enhancing the ZT value. And then finally, bismuth telluride, bismuth antimon telluride materials, which is a topic of my presentation. And motivation, experimental part, then finally, structural and transfer property is going to be last topic of my presentation. So here in the first uh, figure here, you see actually it shows the energy uh, sources that we are using in currently in the world. And as you see here, notice that and uh, the almost 80% of energy we use coming from the fossil fuels. As we know that they have uh, some uh, bad properties. For example, the extraction of this kind of energy sources is very expensive and they have like environmental problems or some many other problems like a carbon emissions. So that's why we have to find uh, alternative clean energy sources. Actually thermoelectric materials is a good candidate for uh, new energy sources because the energy that we used currently in the world, almost 70% is rejected to atmosphere as a uh, vested heat. So we can capture at this part of the energy, even a small part can be converted in electrical power uh, and then we can use it for uh, any, any, any kind of the, uh, sources. So, and this potential of the thermoelectric, of course, attracted more attention to scientists. That's why, as you see here, so every year almost 5,000, 4,000 publications coming out because uh, it's attracted more attention, uh, uh, thermoelectric, recently. As you see here, in like almost a pi five years, the number of the publication in the last five years, is almost a half of the last 20 years. That's also indicated how the thermoelectric field is growing very fastly. Of course, in market, thermoelectric market is also a reflective publications too. And the currently, is the thermoelectric market is about $1 billion, but it's expected to be like a $2 billion in, in five years. So this is the feature map of the thermoelectric modules. The, the biggest problem for the thermoelectric technology is efficiency, but we currently actually improve the efficiency of the materials around uh, 15, 17 percent, which is uh, around here. And when we go to like uh, 30 percent, and then we probably going to be uh, replace uh, this energy sources with uh, the other uh, renewable energy sources like uh, solar panels and wind uh, can be replaced with this kind of energy sources because they have many advantages for in compared to classical energy sources. First of all, they are solid state <coughs> energy sources, solid state materials, solid state devices. Therefore, there is no moving part. There is no necessary for maintenance, no gas emission, silent operation for 1,000 hours. And they can be scalable, so we can make a small or big one. And also, it's, uh, it's a very exact temperature control because they can be used as a cooler or also power generator. So one of the uh, disadvantages of this technology is actually they have still relatively low uh, energy conversion efficiency. So this is some kind of the application currently uh, of the thermoelectric uh, technology. And they can be used as a variable electronics to convert body heat to the electric power. And then they can charge some kind of small uh, sensors, watch, or some other devices. And the other application is especially in the military is attracted more attention. They can make a, like a climate control uh, clothes uh, for, for military. Heating, cooling properties of the materials can be used here. I think this is, yeah. So this is the industrial uh, actually power generator that's uh, announced by Alphabet Energy. The, currently the, uh, the, the company is closed, but this is the first commercial uh, thermoelectric power generator uh, for industrial application. And they announced that they can be 
produce like up to 25 kilo electro uh, watt energy with the systems. And the, the other niche application of the thermoelectric here, you see, uh, especially in the space industry, this is very, very important technology for space application. Uh, they can uh, use like a power generator for uh, to charge the, some electronics on the like, as, uh, especially in the modules, uh, like here, the electronic system on the on the this robots uh, on the Mars. They use like a radioisotope power generator for heating. They use the plutonium radioactive elements, and then for the cooling side, they use the like space temperature. The other interesting application is of the uh, power generator of the modules is actually for the car industry. They can uh, convert heat energy uh, of the exhaust gases uh, into the electric power to charge uh, batteries. Uh, the other applications is the cooling properties of the thermoelectric module can be used as, as, uh, in the seat of the cars here, as you see, uh, or air conditions like mini refrigerator. So this is the industrial thermoelectric uh, application of the coolers. And also like uh, for mini sensor cooling, uh, special devices, electronic parts of the some uh, instruments can be cooled uh, with exactly the temperature controlling with the thermoelectric cooler. So what's the basic of the theory? The theory is actually quite long. It uh, has been announced like by uh, Thomas Seebeck in 1830s. Uh, he, this is the experimental systems of the Thomas Seebeck. And when you combine two different metals, which, he, he, which has to be a conducting, and when you keep the one of the uh, contact uh, places in a different temperature, then you can get the power uh, generator from this connection. In oppositely, uh, Peltier is, is, uh, is invented. He said that when we applied the electrical current to this dissimilar materials connected, and it can be like uh, the temperature gradient can be created in the, in the contact areas. So the thermoelectric figure of merit is the most important parameters for thermoelectric applications because, sorry, uh, the efficiency of the thermoelectric model either, either uh, is the power generator or cooler is strongly depending on the temperature difference and also Z parameters. Z parameter is called thermoelectric figure of merit and it's uh, actually uh, determined by three uh, physical parameters, Seebeck coefficient, electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity. So thermal conductivity consists from two parts, electronic and lattice part. So since these three parameters interrelated to each other, actually this is uh, make a big barrier to, uh, to improve the ZT value as much as we want. That's why we have to manipulate the structure of the materials to enhance the ZT value because ZT, when you increase the ZT value, you actually increase the, the efficiency of the materials. So, as you see here, first we have to decide what materials is going to be best for thermoelectric applications. So when we look at the metals and also semiconductor and insulator, we see that the semiconductors material is the best for thermoelectric application because they have high Seebeck coefficient relatively and also high electrical conductivity and relatively can be controlled thermal conductivity. That's why it should be semiconductor materials. But th this semiconductor is not like a pure semiconductor. It should be like a metallic or high dot semiconductors. So here you see also the, how the ZT is related with the physical parameters. So and then uh, the efficiency we related with the uh, ZT value. So when we reach like ZT about two, and in, in case of the temperature difference about 600 Kelvin, we can reach like 25% efficiency, which is quite high. And of course, so in the last 20 years, there is a tremendous effort has been done to improve the ZT value of the materials. You see some of the ZT value of the some different thermoelectric materials here. And uh, almost the ZT value reached uh, 2.6, 2.7, uh, reported by some groups. This is the in material side, of course. And then uh, you see, especially between 2000 and 2020, there is a big, like a jump in the, in the and the efficiency of the uh, uh, thermoelectric materials that actually the in increasing the ZT value because there are uh, tremendous of the uh, research is has done on this uh, thermoelectric technology in the last 20 years. So if we talk about uh, uh, what kind of uh, approach has been done, especially for the improve the efficiency or ZT value of the thermoelectrics, 
First, we can start with the PGAC, phonon glass electron crystal uh, approach, which was uh, first uh, proposed by Glenn Slack. And according to his proposal, is he said a good thermoelectric material should have high electrical conductivity like a single crystals, but the thermal conductivity should be low as much as uh, glass size. So, and actually this concept is uh, very work, very good, very work in, in the scatterdite compounds. Scatterdite, this is a crystal structure of the scatterdite. It consists from six uh, small cubes and each uh, eight small cubes and six of them is actually occupied by antimony but two uh, cubes is uh, already void. So we can fill these voids with some foregon atoms which have to be like a large and heavy atoms. Then we can manipulate the structure with uh, especially for the thermoelectric, uh, increase the thermoelectric effect uh, of the properties of the materials. So when we fill with the foregon atoms, we can reduce the thermal conductivity because of these fillers can be act like a phonon scattering centers. And also they can be, they can donate electrons to the structure so we can improve the electrical conductivity too. That's why we can increase the ZT value uh, in, in, in some way with the doping uh, or filling. So scatterdites, filling scatterdites have some advantages. One of the most studied thermoelectric materials group. They have, can, they can be produced for N-type and P-type also. Uh, they have very good electronic properties, good mechanical properties, and ZT uh, over one is mostly uh, achievable for these materials. A chemically environment, the low thermal conductivity is one of the other properties of these uh, uh, materials. So uh, the other uh, concept is nanostructuring approach, which is proposed by uh, Professor uh, Dressus from MIT. She was just passed away like two years ago. And he, t he proposed that if we put like some nanophases in the structure, which can be act like a scattering center, also it can be used as a quantum uh, confinement effect, which can be improved as a thermal uh, Seebeck coefficient because of the confinement effect, uh, quantum confinement effect. So in case of we put some nanophases in the structure, uh, this location of the grain boundary because of the, this uh, nanophases can scattering low vent uh, phonons and also uh, 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 act like as a uh, uh, scattering center of the phonons which uh, reduce the thermal conductivity. This is because the electrons phonons have a different uh, mean free paths and wavelength in the structure. So we can control the nano size in the structure then we can manipulate electronic properties of the materials with the nanostruction approach. So the other recently uh, uh, concept is proposed, uh, which is uh, called a phonon liquid electron crystal. It's actually extension of the phonon glass electron concept in which uh, a good thermoelectric material should have high electrical conductivity like single crystals, uh, but the thermal conductivity should be like a lower like liquid crystals, copper calcogenite. So the copper calcogenite and silver calcogenite is uh, one of the good materials who uh, obeys uh, this uh, concept. The other uh, actually uh, concept is mesoscale architecture nanostructure, which is in this concept is we can make some nanophases with a different size in the structure and in this case we can uh, actually scatter more phonons than we expected because different size of the uh, faces it can make a more uh, uh, wavelength of the phonons, like a long wave, mid wave uh, uh, phonons. That's why we can uh, reduce thermal conductivity much more than uh, just with the nanostructuring. So let's talk about the bismuth antimon telluride materials, which is actually most studied thermoelectric materials. And it's, uh, it's also the topic of my presentations. So bismuth telluride is actually as a layer structured thermoelectric materials. They called a tetradimit structure with a group of uh, R3M. And uh, the, this is the crystal structure. And it consists from the layer of the like a tellurium, bismuth tellurium. Uh, and between tellurium and bismuth, there is a, like a strong covalent ionic bonding. And between these two layers have a weak Van der Waals bonds. Uh, this actually uh, allows the materials have very sensitive to doping and also uh, manipulate the structure with the sample preparation processing. 
So uh, I want to give a several uh, example of the or recent studies how the uh, sample preparation process affect the thermoelectric properties. This is one of the uh, or, or uh, papers that we published with uh, our college from the KTH. Uh, they actually synthesized uh, two different methodologies. They use a, a microwave and mechanical alloy follows SPS system, two different bismuth telluride materials. And you see that the uh, crystal structure, the, uh, the, uh, the, the structure of the materials is completely different in, in case of they have different uh, sample preparation processing. Even they are the same compound, same crystal structure, but the, uh, the grain size and uh, also the grain uh, layers, uh, the, uh, the thickness of the layers are totally different. So it's changed the electro electronic and transport properties, of course. So as we see here, the ZT value can be reached up to uh, 1.05 for the microwave assisted uh, thermoelectric uh, bismuth tellurite. So similarly with the cooperation of the polyol and hydrothermal processes which is two other chemical processing they used to synthesize bismuth tellurite and in this case also we see there is a big difference with the structural and of course the transport properties and the transport properties can be changed with uh, also uh, synthesized processing here. The other papers that we publish uh, and we see here the fabrication of the 3D method we used for the bismuth telluride uh, materials uh, and then we synthesize, uh, we actually check the, the sintering effect on the materials and the ZT value 0 0.6 for 3D materials uh, we achieved for these uh, materials and it is quite reasonable and comparable with the bulk thermoelectrics. So what was our motivation for this study? Especially we see that the structural and transport properties of these materials is very sensitive to doping and sample preparation processing. And doping on the bismuth have a strong effect on the transport properties because bismuth is playing a key role on the, uh, the structural and thermoelectric properties of these materials. So we also checked the literature and there is very limited uh, works on that how the rare earth and also alkali metals affect the thermoelectric properties of these materials. And we're also looking for the simple and efficient way we can find to improve uh, the, the thermoelectric properties. And also, when we want to make a mass production of these materials, we cannot use like a very uh, a complicated and expensive processing. So we use the simple and very efficient processing that I'm going to talk now. So first of all, uh, we are using a three, two different uh, reference materials, bismuth telluride for N-type and antimon bismuth telluride for P-type, that is uh, our reference materials. And then we doped with the barium, ytterbium, and boron for this. As you see, have these three materials have different atomic mass, different uh, atomic radius, and also electronic configurations. So for the sample preparation processing, I want to give you a brief information. So first of all, we are using the high pure materials, metals, and then weight it in the glow box, and then mix it, then put it in the uh, zirconia bore uh, jars, and then this jar is sealed under the uh, vacuum, and then uh, put in the uh, plenary bowl milling for six hours at 600 RPM, and then fine powders, we take it out from the jars and then cold press it, uh, which is about 200 megapascal pressure. as a disc shape, which is like a one millimeter thick and three 30 millimeter uh, diameter disc shape pellets. And then we put this disc in the uh, furnace, uh, vacuum furnace, uh, and then under the argon gas, so like a 400 Celsius, uh, leave it there for 10 hours. Then final compacted disc is measured for thermal conductivity first. Uh, with the laser flash thermal conductivity devices and then rectangular, we cut it as a rectangular bar for CVEC and electrical conductivity measurement. And also some small pieces can be used for the uh, SCM analysis on also powder XRD analysis. So let's talk about the powder uh, diffraction of this materials. As you see here, there are three uh, this or reference materials and then bore, uh, barium and ytterbium. As we, we compare with the uh, crystal structure of these materials up to 3.0.3, .3, we didn't see any big difference in this, uh, the phases of the materials, which is uh, indicated that this is also a single phase of the bismuth telluride. 
And similarly, for the p-type materials, when we dope with 0 0.2 uh, bar, barium and uh, ytterbium, uh, it still shows the same uh, crystal structure, but the intensity is a little change. This is because like the extension of the uh, unit cell is it's indicated the extension of unit cell. However, when we go up to 0 0.5 doping, and of course we observe some secondary phases in the structure, which is uh, uh, destroy the thermoelectric properties that we are going to see now in the next slides. Uh, that's why we can say that 0 0.2, 0 0.3 is the maximum doping limit for the bismuth, uh, y uh, sorry, uh, barium, ytterbium, and boron for these materials. So when we look at the crystal uh, st uh, uh, structure of the materials with the SCM, this is the bismuth telluride, and this is bor bismuth telluride and antimon telluride, antimon bismuth telluride p-type, p-type, and boron. We see that just this, actually this, the, the, uh, they all show the like a text texture structure. So they are very dense structure and the small grains, which is actually coming because of the ball milling processing, uh, which is we believe that. Uh, but the ju just the, the distance between the layers is getting smaller when we put some boron inside. So let's talk about the thermoelectric properties. First of all, uh, let's start with the barium doped bismuth telluride. As you see, the electrical conductivity increases with the barium doping, and also the CB coefficient decreases. That's indicated that the electronic, uh, the electronic properties increase because the uh, carrier concentration might be increases with doping. And the thermal conductivity also increases with barium because the electronic conductivity is increases. And the power factor, war for, uh, power factor is good for when we put 0 0.1 uh, barium in the, in, uh, in the samples and then we reach like uh, 18 uh, microwatt per centimeter Kelvin. So the ZT value 1.05, we can reach about 350 Kelvin for the bismuth barium telluride, uh, barium 0 0.1 included. Uh, for boron, as you see here, it's a similar effect. When we put the boron, it's, uh, the electrical conductivity also changed dramatically. When we reach uh, 0 0.3 and 5, it's jumping like dramatically. Uh, CB coefficient also decreases as you see here, electric thermal conductivity in again it increases because of the electronic part of thermal conductivity increases. So the power factor again it uh, increases a little bit because of the bar borium boron 0 0.1 0 0.3, and the maximum ZT value we reach uh, one uh, uh, on these materials when we uh, put uh, boron at uh, 350 Kelvin. So for the ytterbium, again, very similar to, you see, very similar to barium doped samples. The electrical conductivity dramatically change with uh, inclusion of the ytterbium. CB coefficient decreases again, and the thermal conductivity increases, and uh, power factor just uh, enhance about 22 because of the relatively higher CB coefficient and power uh, electrical conductivity when we put uh, ytterbium 0.1. So the maximum ZT value 1.1 will reach for the ytterbium doped samples in n-type. So for the p-type samples, when we look at it, uh, we again, we go like in the bismuth site, barium and ytterbium and then boron we doped. And we look at it, the electrical conductivity. So again, very similar. Uh, the barium is increased the electrical conductivity and decreased the CB coefficient because electric and CB coefficient generally have opposite trend and thermal conductivity uh, increases because of the uh, increasing the electrical conductivity. The power factor increase when we reach 0 0.23 and the uh, ZT value reach 1.0 uh, at 400 Kelvin. So for the bismuth telluride and the boron doped samples, we can say similar effect actually here. Uh, when we increase the boron uh, content of the materials, we see that electrical conductivity increases dramatically uh, because uh, of the uh, borons like donate electrons in the structure and to change the carrier density. And also it's interestingly, uh, we see here is the p-type materials, for example, the uh, pristine materials. When we put the boron uh, inside, uh, we change the actually the, uh, the, the nature of the 
conductivity too. So in first, in the pristine materials like a metallic but very close to semiconducting behavior. But when we put the uh, boron inside, the actual electrical conductivity change and then decreasing the electrical conductivity temperature indicated like the metallic behavior. So we actually the change the, the behavior of the uh, conductivity from the semiconducting to metallic behavior with the boron doping in the p-type materials. And C back coefficient is a sign is a positive indicated uh, the the electron uh, uh, hole is a main carrier in this compound, and then we can see the nature of the C back coefficient again, like in electrical conductivity where we put the boron inside. So uh, this this behavior is actually we can see in the thermal conductivity too. So the boron doping in the p-type antimon bismuth telluride change the nature of the conductivity of these materials from semiconducting to metallic behavior. So that's why and uh, we see here when we put uh, the 0 0.1 uh, boron, uh, we can reach 1.1 ZT value for the p-type materials uh, on these materials. So for uh, uh, ytterbium doped samples, we see here and uh, when we put it further uh, content of the ytterbium, actually we destroy the electrical conductivity, change the, the, the nature of the electric conductivity too. So in case when we go like up to three, 0 0.3, we still have metallic behavior. But when we go like 0 0.5, we destroy the structure because I think this is because of the secondary phases that we observed in, uh, in case when we put more ytterbium inside. So, and the c back coefficient, again, is decreases because of the electrical conductivity increases. This is likely, it might be because of the uh, charge carrier uh, concentration change with the uh, ytterbium. And the thermal conductivity strongly depend on the electronic and lattice part. So electronic part is dominated here too. So electrical conductivity, uh, thermal conductivity is also increases uh, with uh, content of the ytterbium. However, when we look at the power factor and then compare with the thermal conductivity, we see that the ytterbium is not very effective to enhance the ZT value for the p-type materials. So in conclusion, what I can say, and the barium, boron, and ytterbium doped n-type and p-type bismuth antimon telluride, we, this compound we synthesized very successfully with the mechanical alloy by follow-up cold press and sintering method. And we structurally analyzes the samples and uh, it showed that uh, all samples shows like an identical crystal structure of the bismuth telluride, telluride except the X is 0 0.5 which is means when we put like a 0 0.5, 0 0.4 uh, ytterbium, boron and barium
thanks for the nice um, organized talk. Uh, my question is about the uh, which po which side is occupying the substitution atoms like barium, ytterbium, boron. They have different like completely different sizes. They are they going to the same site or? So you didn't, did yeah. yeah, that might be a little bit tricky, but uh, yeah, we we'll to see it's there or not. Yeah, also, can I ask one more? Yeah. <laughs> so 0 0.2 sounds a little bit like uh, quite a lot of like amount because if you think it's donating like one electron, if I don't know, like one elec one more electron or something, then the carrier concentration should go up much larger because people usually put s really small amount of like iodine or uh, bromide for, for doping sometimes for uh, that's for any type probably So it's at, at least it's soluble, right? Yeah, yeah. It looks like it looks like powder powder deflection is pretty. Yeah. Mm. 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 And you can detect uh, everything like each even. Yeah, I was thinking probably it's not just donating the electron, probably just changing the like uh, defect balance of terrarium business can change. I don't know. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I think I, I believe that uh, elements are going in, but uh, maybe the some various effects to the properties. So, Structure, so anyway, thank, thank you. you very much for, for great questions. I have maybe one or two. Yeah, just following the Kazu's actually comment, mm -hmm. I also believe that like. 0.1 to 0.5 is too much, mm -hmm. but this is nominal content. Like yes, nominal that's nominal. It's not that you put in, right. probably during the ball milling, you yes. lose most of yes. it. Yes. And the actual content is, I am sure, that lower than 0 0.1. Exactly. Efficiency, doping efficiency is much, much lower than what you put in, mm -hmm. I think. And I, I had the same question, actually. Like, if you think about like boron, barium, mm -hmm. they have completely <laughs> different, totally different size. <laughs> barium right. is quite big. Yes. Boron is very small, tiny. Yes. Yes. For barium to go to bismuth side, I am not sure if it is possible. Maybe because mm -hmm. bismuth is, you see, like very small. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, for boron, the scenario there are more scenarios because boron is small. It can even go to interstitial sites. It mm -hmm. may not replace any element here. Mm -hmm. It can mm -hmm. go to interstitial site. 
we right. are also working on boron so that's right. why i'm telling right. but right. it is a hard issue to resolve it high resolution tm or real single crystal diffraction analysis needed i here. i totally agree with you the actually what we expected before we did this analysis uh, the thermolytic property where i expected like Okay, maybe ytterbium not go into the bismuth, but it can create some nanostructure and it's actually decreased the lattice thermal conductivity. That's why we expected to see the thermal conductivity should be much lower mm -hmm. than increase the electrical. But as you see here, in all dopants, act like uh, electron donation. So it's changed the electrical conduct much more than decreasing the yeah thermal conductivity. Yeah. So that's make me a little confusing because if it is not goes into the Bismuth side, how it changed the electric corner such a big, right? Right. If we, if it's not goes there, we should observe some secondary phases in the structure. But if it goes to interstitial site, it that can also donate electron. Yes. And that can increase the conductivity as well. If for it's barium, anti for anti boron, anti it's right. But for barium and yttrium, they're large mm -hmm. and uh, they're most likely very effective to make a uh, reaction with the antimony mm -hmm. and yttrium antimony, yttrium oxide. So. It's hard to ask answer exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, last question. Is sure. there any other question? Uh, yeah, any yeah, yeah, just one more question and then mm -hmm. I will finish. Um, bismuth antimony tellurite. So you are um, SPS in your like hot pressing it at 400 Celsius degree. Not for a uh, uh, hot press, we just use the sintering. Okay, but yeah. 400 degree. Yeah, 400 yeah. degree. Yeah, 10 yes. hours. 10 hours. Right. But when you do measurement, we go up to 250 degree. Yes. Because we know that above 250 degree, it starts decomposing in a sense. Not like at exactly 300 degree. No. Uh, uh, if you like uh, do too much pressure. Right. And uh, it, it can be do, but uh, for this for the measurement, mm -hmm. we go up to 300. Yeah, but not yeah. 400. Not 400. For the 400 sintering temperature mm -hmm. is good for bismuth tellurite. Yeah, we tested. I know. So probably yeah. the reason is that at 400 degree with the applied pressure. Yes, maybe the it do doesn't do decompose. But if no, you do when you apply the pressure, it can be decompose. Mm -hmm. Without application of the pressure, I think it, it doesn't, doesn't decompose, decompose. Okay. because no pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, you actually uh, when you apply the pressure, you mm -hmm. you, you know you, you make more uh, decompose the materials because the, the grains is come to each other very closely. They reacted with the temperature, but here no pressure. Okay. No. <laughs> Uh, so that's why uh, sintering is good uh, for this material, but we cannot go up to 500. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Then yeah, uh, let's stop it here and then move to the second speaker. But let me give your certificate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay. <laughs>